Hi, I'm Michael Costa, and welcome to The Daily Show's Donald Trump Tour of New York. Like Frank Sinatra and a rat dragging pizza down the stairs, Donald J. Trump and New York City are inextricably linked. So come with me as I show you the places that formed him and the places he formed with only his wits, millions of dollars of his dad's money, and the hard work of contractors he stiffed. It'll be like a Sex in the City tour with less estrogen and way more sex. <laughs> Join me, won't you? We're going to kick the tour off with Trump Tower, the crown jewel in Donald Trump's global real estate empire. His fucking ham palace, if you will. Besides Trump's personal residence and a Starbucks, it's also home to the world's most famous escalator. Well, the world's only famous escalator. Trump Tower is where the future president would call Mexicans They're rapists, rapists, then rub in their faces how much he likes their cooking. As president-elect, Trump used this building to meet with everyone from senators to Kanye West. Yeezy to Jeff Sesh Yeezy. He was also a hub of activity during the campaign and played host to a not at all treasonous meeting that include senior campaign staff like Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort and Russian lawyers offering dirt on Hillary Clinton. But as a great man once said, no collusion, witch hunt, kofifi. Vamano, shall we? Oh, here we are, Central Park. It was named that in 1997 as an homage to Central Perk, the coffee shop in that TV show Friends. But five New Yorkers Donald Trump wasn't friends with? The Central Park Five. The five juveniles falsely accused and wrongly imprisoned of assaulting a jogger. No one told them life was going to be this way. But even though they were fully exonerated in 2002 with DNA evidence, Donald Trump insisted as recently as 2016 that they were still guilty. Actually, you know what? Just realized there were six friends on that show, not five. It kind of falls apart. Oh, and Trump runs the rink here. Woolman Rink for ice skating. So that's kind of fun. Huh, moving on. Come on, I'm, I'm gonna show you inside of Donald Trump's childhood home. It's exciting. Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? No, no, you don't need to call the cops. You don't need to call the cops. Wait, let's go, we gotta go, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is 8515 Wareham Place, Jamaica, New York, 11432. You know, every hero has an origin story, and Donald Trump's begins in this unassuming house in Queens. Just like Spider-Man, except instead of being bitten by a radioactive spider, Trump was bitten by a radioactive racist real estate mogul. Sorry, not bitten by, fathered by. <laughs> I get those confused. It was here that Donald Trump was shaped into the man he is today like when he punched his music teacher in the face in the second grade because he didn't think he knew anything about music. Anyway, in 2017, the current owners briefly listed the home on Airbnb where you could have rented it for just $725 a night. So worth it. Man, if those walls could talk. Too bad Trump had him sign non-disclosure agreements. They saw way too much. <laughs> I gotta piss. Here we are at New York's famous Plaza Hotel, which Donald Trump purchased in 1988 for $407 million before it was sold seven years later for $325 million. Only a loss of $83 million before you adjust for inflation. That would make it worse. It was also here that Donald Trump told an adorable 11-year-old Macaulay Culkin that the lobby is down the hall and to the left. Not to be confused with the time Trump actually said this to an adorable real-life 14-year-old girl at Trump Tower. You're going up the escalator? I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Can you go? Oh, boy. Clearly none of those kids should be left home alone. <laughs> Here we are in sunny, adequate Coney Island, where every July 4th, grown adults cram hot dogs down their gullets by the dozen. 
But that's only the second most disgusting thing to happen here, because Coney Island is also home to Trump Village, an apartment complex with lovely ocean views and a history of the Trumps openly discriminating against black people. According to the U.S. Justice Department, Trump and his father Fred made their employees attach a piece of paper with a big letter C to any apartment application from a person who was colored. The Department of Justice accused the Trumps of violating the Fair Housing Act, arguing they were turning away renters based on race and color. But you know what else starts with the letter C? The cyclone, which I'm about to go ride. Hopefully they allow white people. Whee! Love child, love child, you're my love child. Why am I singing love child to the tune of Sex Bomb? The answer is behind me. The Trump World Tower. This 72 floor, 376 unit luxury condominium is where Dino Sajudin, a doorman at this very property, received $30,000 from the National Enquirer to keep quiet about a story that Donald Trump allegedly fathered a child with one of his housekeepers. Could this love child story be a slanderous lie? Who knows? But maybe if I keep talking about it right here, I too can get 30K to be quiet. I'm great at not mentioning things, like my brother's adoption. I mean, he's Filipino, you'd think he'd put it together. So yeah, send me some cash and I'll keep quiet. Let's keep going. Yalta, Potsdam, Versailles. The site of great summits to be sure, but none quite so consequential as famous Famiglia Pizzeria. This not hidden, not gem, sadly closed a few years ago and is now an establishment called Gifts and Luggage, a place that answers the question, what if the phrase fell off of the back of a truck was a store? But back in 2011, famous Famiglia played host to a meeting between Donald Trump and former Republican <laughs> vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin. Their encounter seemed inevitable, considering how much the two have in common. She can see Russia from her house. He can often see Russians in his house. Trump and Palin also bought convention by eating their pizza with a knife and fork, signaling to blue collar New Yorkers, I'm one of you, if you got hit in the head with a rock and forgot how to eat pizza. Hey, let's continue. Oh, hey everyone. It's the building formerly known as Trump Place. Why formerly? Because the Donald-hating tenants here love this condo so much that rather than move somewhere else, they simply stripped his name off the building. But really, this is just another feather in Donald Trump's cap. His properties are so luxurious that even people who detest him can't bring themselves to move out. Sure, he's a white supremacist, but have you seen these walk-in closets? Anyway, Trump sued, but the condo owners won. So now instead of Trump Place, I guess it's just called Place. You gotta hand it to him. It takes a great man to get evicted from a building he doesn't even live in. Let me go back to jogging. Donald Trump has always believed that women can achieve greatness, a sentiment he shared many times right here in Howard Stern's old K-Rock studio. It was here that the future president told millions of commuter Americans this. I view a, a person who's flat-chested is very hard to be a 10. See, he didn't say it was impossible to be a 10. He just said it was very hard. Because he believes that in America, women can climb all the way to the top, specifically to the top of a board ranking the attractiveness of women. We're gonna pick a winner. Now let's see, who is best? I think we have to put Marla right up here. Come on, let's do that. I let's take so. down Frederic. Kim Alley, I don't know. Take Stephanie, her down. Stephanie, I know, but I, I never had. All right. Et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and lastly, the Howard Stern studio is where our president proved that he's always been willing to go to war for women. Metaphorically, at least. Now, getting back to dating, never it gotten a, a social disease. It, it is a dangerous world out there. It's it really is. Scary. It's like Vietnam, sort it, of like, you know, the it Vietnam is. era. It is your personal Vietnam, isn't it? It is my personal It is. You've Vietnam. said that many I times. like a great and very brave soldier. So the next time you see our president's penis, be sure to thank it for its service. Oh, justice. No tour of Trump's New York would be complete without some court time. And while there may not be a courtroom with Trump's name on it, his name has been mentioned inside courtrooms many times. In fact, over the last three decades, Trump has been a part of 4,095 lawsuits. So five more and his next divorce is free. 
Now this here is the New York State Supreme Court, which played host to the State of New York versus Trump University, a case that ended in a $25 million settlement that included a penalty for calling the program a university despite offering no degrees or traditional education. Strangely though, he's never been fined for calling Trump stakes stakes, instead of what they should be called beef adjacent meat chunks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a small indecency charge to take care of. I mean, come on, everybody pees. How can it be illegal? Ah, yes, the former Trump Soho building. Fun fact, the main reason Donald Trump wanted a property in this specific neighborhood was that he thought Soho stood for sodomy hot dog. Two of the things he loves most. But actually, we're here because of Ivanka and Don Jr., Trump's favorite child and second least favorite child. They've always known the best way to their father's heart, a good old fashioned real estate fraud scheme. That's why those two rascals allegedly coordinated an effort to mislead condominium buyers about the Soho building's value. But don't worry, before they could be charged with fraud, their family lawyer made a $25,000 donation to the Manhattan DA's re-election campaign. And voila, the charges disappeared faster than that Louis C.K. movie about sexual misconduct. Anyway, the Trump Soho was a complete financial flop. They took down the Trump name in 2017, and this glass shipbox was renamed The Dominic. Was it because everybody in the city kind of hates Trump? Maybe. Or maybe it's because, nah, everybody hates him. It's pretty obvious, actually. My scooter's here. Hey, come back! It's 6 a.m. in Washington. A crisis is unfolding somewhere overseas, and a restless president awaits the counsel of his most trusted advisors. Fox and Friends! Yes, it is here! On America's most consequential couch that Brian Kilmeade, Steve Ducey, and Ainsley Earhart give the president his daily morning briefing. This is the epicenter of the echo chamber. Fox and Friends reports, then Trump tweets about the report, then Fox and Friends reports the tweet. Well, the president just tweeted this out. He said, thank you to the Cherokee Nation for revealing that Elizabeth Warren, sometimes referred to as Pocahontas, is a complete and total fraud. That's his story. That's right. And around, around it goes until the sweet release of death. In the 60s, Walter Cronkite had, and that's the way it is. Now, Fox and Friends has, Mr. President, please turn your TV down in the background. We're getting some feedback again. 